Hello and welcome to a new episode of Engineered Unicorns, fantastic books for a magical lifestyle. My name is Sandy J and we are at Campus Radio Karlsruhe. Now, for this episode, I have a fantasy recommendation for you, a non-fiction recommendation, plus some books that will be released in this month and another recommendation for your cozy and magical home. I don't know how your November went. Mine was fairly okay. I had some ups, had some downs. From the upside, I finished five books in total. And I also had an audiobook streak, which means I listened to two audiobooks in very short time because I was totally thrown in. And one of those books is actually my recommendation for this month. I had some breakage too because my fairy light in the kitchen broke after more than 15 years of use. Luckily, because it's close to Christmas, I had the chance to replace it with another fairy light that's colorful and a plug-in fairy light. As I've told you earlier this year, it's hard to get plug-in fairy lights currently, but close to Christmas, they are available. So I picked up a colorful fairy light for my kitchen. Unfortunately, <laughs> it has blue lights in it and my old fairy light didn't have blue lights. Back then I really missed it and was not so happy that I didn't have any blue lights because I like blue lights. But what I realized now that I have one with blue lights is that the lighting is slightly colder than the one I had before. So Fair warning, if you want warm lighting only, the fairy lights with blue aren't that good for you because blue is a cold light. In any case, I also... <laughs> the, the next thing was when I bought this fairy light, they also had a lot of other fairy lights in a warm white or ember light as they call it. So I picked up three more fairy lights. So I put up one in my corridor in my flat and I put one in my bathroom because these places do have rather cold lights in the ceiling and I never liked them. In any case, it was quite fun to just go back to the department store over and over because it was not that I had planned to buy them. It was more like, oh yeah, I could put up one there too. And then I went and got another string light for this place. And I really like it in my corridor. I especially like it in the morning in the bathroom because I had so cold lighting and I didn't like it in the morning because um, cold hard light. <laughs> you don't look good in your mirror. <laughs> so the warm light is much better for this. But you have to be careful with the light. Don't come close to the water. I found a way to put mine up without any chance to get into the water because electricity and water don't mix well, as you may know. In any case, I'm happy that I do now have plug-in fairy lights because I don't like those fairy lights with batteries because batteries, as you may well know, aren't that good for the environment. So while they have their use, I am not fond of them to use them in fairy lights. In any case, I do have one fairy light which is battery driven, but I use this for pictures. So there it, it is okay. In general, I try to use plug-in ones so I don't have more waste. Because as we all know after this year and in general, to produce more waste isn't good. Fairy lights, if you want to make your flat a bit magical and are looking for plug-in fairy lights, now is the time to go and look for them because they're easily available. I want to recommend to you Tuesday Memory Talks to Ghost by Kate Raculia. I listened to it as an audiobook. I highly recommend this audiobook. It's really, really well read. And the book is in itself, the story is wonderful. It's a heron's journey. So the topics range around found family and connection and stuff like this. And it's a really well written book. And the audio narration is absolutely fantastic. 
The book is a mystery and it's an urban mystery, you could say. The main character, Tuesday Mooney, is a goth and a nerd and she works for a hospital but she's a fundraiser for the hospital and she actually for a living researches people with very high net worth so that they can then invite those people to their fundraising events and it's on this event something happens one of those people who are there dies at this event and through that she gets drawn into a game which this person that has died has set up for after his death and through this whole game which is you know like a schnitzeljagd so they have this person has put up clues all over the city of boston and so she and several others that were invited or have seen the announcement are looking for the clues and are part of the game and we follow her and her group of friends which is always expanding as it's usual with Heron's journey and the side characters are wonderfully written they do have their own lives which is fantastic because I hate books where you only have a main character and the side characters are bland or are just there to advance the story for the hero in her case the side characters have their own lives they have their own goals and you mainly like them naturally you don't like the adversaries of her so it's quite well written in this regard there's also a little bit of romance in it but it's not the main part the characters are all just as colorful as you usually have in real life you have a very good representation of different persons in this book there's a gay person they do have all kinds of ethnicity backgrounds in this book the author also talks about how it is when you lose a very very close friend because from tuesday Muni, her close friend died or went missing when tuesday was 16 and she still has to grapple with it and they do talk about how this played out for her and how this still has an impact on her daily life even now that she's over 30 so this is another thing that I quite like about this book that the heroine is over 30 and not just in her 20s or even in her teens and all the other characters have an age range too so this is quite nice too so in my opinion it's a very well-rounded book and as I've said before the narration is amazing so I highly recommend that you read it it was published last year I don't remember how I found out about it it might be that I just got the recommendation at my audiobook provider in any case it's really really nice you can't get it at a local library in Karlsruhe currently it's definitely worth a read or a listen <laughs> if you like it. The non-fiction recommendation that I have for you is the Monocle The Forecast by Monocle magazine. They do this yearly and this edition is quite interesting. What I like about Monocle magazine and Monocle radio and their podcast is that they are truly global. So for them Europe doesn't only consist of Germany, France and UK there are also all the other countries in it. America is not synonymous for the USA. No, it's two continents with lots of more countries on it. They do have correspondence all over the world, which is something I really like about it. So their news and all their shows are much more well-rounded. During the last years, I recognize that you don't even get that much information about countries that are close to you. Uh, for instance, what I found out in November was that Switzerland has actually a female president too, though her title is a bit different. And that's also due to Monocle that I found out about it. And this made it fairly obvious that Monocle is 
much more well-rounded, that they have a much more interesting point of view. They are also trying to be optimistic. Not so much that they don't see the problems anywhere, but that they have a more optimistic outlook as a lot of other magazines or news corporations. So this is why I quite like them. And you can also get from a local, they do a daily newsletter per email, which is for free, as same as their podcasts, which are also for free. So you can download them. I will give you some links in the show notes. As I've said before, the, these, uh, the forecast is their yearly magazine and it's always taking leaders and interesting personalities from around the world and they talk about certain topics like urbanism and like public transport or other mobility issues, which is quite helpful also. I find them well researched, well rounded. I just need an idea and then I can further research it. And so this is why I quite like them. And the forecast is really interesting because there are people from all over the world who contributed to this issue and they talk about how the cities are looking into improving their places, how to make them more livable, how to get on with the pandemic and what it means for them. So this is really interesting because you see there's not one solution. It always depends on the certain place where you are, but you can get ideas and could turn them around for your city. So this is why it's so interesting and why I highly recommend this. Naturally, they don't know what will come next year. I mean, nobody knows what will come next year. Let's hope that the inoculations are well and that we can get all safe again from Corona because even I get now <laughs> a bit stressed because of the whole shutdown and stuff like this. While even those people don't know what will happen next year exactly, logically, they do have an idea for their field. They know what might happen and they know what they are broadly planning for. So this is quite interesting and so I highly recommend Monaco the Forecast to look into it. Now there are some books coming out in December. It's not as much as in October or September. So I have three books that I want to talk about. Casing Calendar released King of the Rising on December 1st. She's a black author, so check her out. Sean Gibson releases the part about the dragon was mostly true. <laughs> it's a funny fantasy book. It will be released on 15th of December. And Serena the Wild will have a book coming out on 29th of December, which is called Fairy Godmother's Inc. So those are the three books that I found that I think are interesting. Last but not least, I do have two things more for you. To make your mornings and evenings more magical, I have put together a playlist, Magical Unicorn Morning. You find it via Spotify or in the show notes. And it's a playlist with a very, very nice music. There's a lot of Melody Gado from her new album. And it's very string heavy and it's just magical as the title already says. And I quite like it. Tried it out in several versions and on several occasions. And it's really good in the morning when you just are getting up from your bed and you have your fairy lights on, making your first cup of coffee or tea, depending on what you like. And it's really nice to ease into the day. It's also quite nice if you are taking a morning stroll. I listened to it when I went to an early morning appointment and walked slowly through the botanical garden in Karlsruhe. It was a really nice morning. The sun was shining, but it was really cold. So you had all those frost showing all over the place. And it was quite nice to listen to this playlist and I hope you like it too. 
If you listen to this in the stream, we will put the music from the Magical Unicorn Morning after this stream. If you are listening to the podcast, you will have to go to Spotify and find it for yourself. In December, we not just prep for the year by reading the forecast, <laughs> but also by cleaning or, and sorting our place. At least it's for me this way. It's also something that the Japanese do. They even have a name for it. It's called Zuzu Harai. It starts for them around December 13th from what I have read. And because I tend to listen to a certain kind of music when I'm cleaning and putting my stuff in order, I thought it would be nice to give you also this playlist and so on December 13th or maybe 14th, we will put out another playlist for you on Spotify, which is called Unicorn Cleaning Playlist. And this music is mainly electronic music. And because I watch cleaning motivation YouTube videos, I have mostly gotten the songs there. So I will also put up some cleaning motivation links for YouTube in the show notes. So all the books, all the recommendations will be in the show notes. So this is it for this month and this year already. The new episode will come out on January 10th. I wish you happy holidays, whatever it is that you are celebrating. The music in this episode is as always by Evan Schmidt. My name is Sandy J. This is Campus Verde Karlsruhe and the name of the podcast is Engineered Unicorns. I wish you a good start into 2021. Let's hope that that year is better than 2020. Happy holidays. Here soon.